I was playing the fucking banjo, you know? And I discovered that music was something that I found interesting to do, you know? And I really didn't get into rock and roll until later than that, you know? Other than, like, as a young kid, being into the Beatles, you know? But that was, like, that was like magic, you know? It wasn't like, it wasn't like me going, this is the music business or anything, you know? It was just flat out, like, magic to me, you know? And, uh, and then I got into, you know, playing on my own as a young teen, you know, but it was never like a big dream of mine to like be a, like a rock star or anything like that. You know, that's what I mean. The punk rock thing allowed me to be able to play shows, you know. And what that did is give me the opportunity to to do music in front of people and have that be an element that's, that's suddenly involved with the making of the fucking art, you know, the making of the music, you know. And it's just like, I kind of dug that. I dig the interaction, you know, it adds something different, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'm fucking content to be above ground, you know what I mean? All things considered, and that that we're we still get to play that uh you know there's enough people that care about it you know to allow it to continue in that way and I, yeah I'm, I'm very pleased with that you know and, and certainly it's like yeah you know you have your ego involved and you have like pragmatism involved where it's like man, you gotta fucking pay the bills you know you gotta eat and that kind of thing and definitely some of my friends have bigger houses you know and you know nicer cars and on and on and on like that you know and is anybody ever really satisfied? Is life something that you can actually get satisfaction out of? You know what I mean? It's the, the human experience, the human condition. So, yes and no, you know? Yeah, really, really glad to be playing. But, uh, you know, I fucking really, really wanted, you know, a Lamborghini, you know? <laughs> no, yeah, man, I'm, it's badass. Me pups are sick. It's, it's, we've gotten to a place that's really fucking cool. I grew up in the 70s as a teenager, you know, started getting into music as a kid. And rock and roll at that point was really about, like, big bands, you know, and there were cover bands and whatnot that played in the bars and that kind of a thing, but mostly rock and roll was kind of like a rock star kind of a thing. Punk rock happened and suddenly you could just do shows, you know, and it didn't have to be aimed quite so high. Uh, so for that, that, I mean, that already was a, like a, a change in the industry at, at that point, you know, where suddenly it wasn't quite so much about just quite as much money involved, really, you know. So we met, we wound up putting out a bunch of records on an independent label. SST was the label that we were on. It was Black Flag's label, you know. And uh, it was real cool because, I mean, the, the side of it that I was interested in was the art side, you know, actually getting the work done, you know. And then there's, like, the business side of it and, like, the acclaim and that kind of thing. And it just wasn't, I mean, it, it, it plays a part in it. If you can actually put that together in a single package, you know, where you're, like, you know, or it's something that people want to just have uh, as yeah, or, or be near or whatever you know and yet also make you know your art that's one thing but I'm kind of withdrawn you know it's not that big of a thing to me I like to like playing the music and going in the studio and making records and stuff like that and, and we were able to do that because of the punk rock thing that had happened you know suddenly you can just make records and it, there was a lower level of the commercial side of things involved so but uh then it went on, and then you saw the major labels suddenly start to be interested in stuff like us, and Nirvana broke that out, you know, and, there was, and then bands kind of after that, there was a whole thing where they turned it into alternative and all this kind of different stuff, and it's still business folks. And then a while ago, you know, the internet blew up to the degree that it did, and it really kind of broke the backs of those people in a way, you know, to where suddenly you see, like in the States anyways, you know, records are topping the charts, selling pretty much like independent numbers, you know, in a way, you know, they're not selling millions and millions of records and getting on top of, the, top of the charts. They're able to come out and sell tens of thousands of records on top of the charts because it's, it's that's, I mean, obviously the major difference. And it's not like I'm fucking informing anybody of that. It's, it's you know, pretty glaringly obvious that, like, you can get music for free now <laughs> if you want it. So, you know, and, it, you know, it hadn't affected me that much, you know. I never made that fucking much money doing this anyways. You know, I've got to get around the world a lot, played music a whole bunch, and been the person that I wanted to be. But it wasn't like my financial situation was that critically, you know, changed by the fact that, you know, people don't pay for, they don't, don't have access to the music except by buying it as much. You know, now they get it in just in different ways. So, I mean, that's for sure. I don't know. It seems like that kind of shit's changed. Nothing's changed in my fucking world, you know, really. So.